Hello and welcome to DIG 4715 uh, video tutorial using analytics in Unity. My name is Sean Randall and I'll be happy to take you through this and hopefully it helps you out. Uh, first we should probably start by defining analytics in Unity or analytics in general. And analytics is a systematic computational analysis of data or statistics. All game designers should ask the question, what are analytics and how do I use them? Analytics are a way to look at the usage data of a game. They can answer questions about gameplay, errors, and a host of other design issues. Analytics identifies events that can range from scripting errors to player deaths and create corresponding data for the designer to use during both design iteration and play testing. And furthermore, going forward with uh, monetary issues, monetizing your game. So this usage data can include answers for, but it's not limited to who plays, when do they play, who spends money and when, what is the retention of players and how much time do they play, who spends money, where and when do errors occur, and where are the sticky points of player progression or lack of interest points. Now for the purposes of nonprofit game designers, or those still in playtesting, the most important of these questions are number four, six, and seven, which are what is the retention of players and how much time do they play, where and when do errors occur, and where are the sticky points of player progression or lack of interest points. This tutorial will focus on those questions as they relate to a game still in the iterative design and playtesting process. The software used for analytics in this tutorial is Game Ad Analytics. Uh, going forward, uh, I will likely refer to it as GA throughout the rest of this tutorial, or interchangeably between GA and Game Analytics. It can be found at GameAnalytics.com. I'll bring that up for you now. So you can see here my mouse, mouse position where you can sign up or log in. Uh, the download instructions from there are pretty simple, uh, standard stuff. So you download it, and uh, once you have it downloaded, um, you go back into Unity and start it. So as you can see here, I've already gone to File and new to create new project and when we come in to load up packages you'll notice as I scroll down to the bottom here that you have game analytics unity package you want to make sure that you have that checkbox clicked and we'll create our new project and I'm going to go ahead and pause while that loads and we're back you can see that we have the beginnings of a unity project now you'll see here on the right side that sign up or sign in may be required. Uh, and when you do this, uh, it's when you have it complete, it's going to generate a game key and a secret key, which will be generated and displayed in the same area of the screen where sign up and sign in was accomplished. Both of these values need to be saved or written down for later scripting that involves finding the tracking data for the game. So I'll go ahead and log in. Okay, so I've logged in. And you'll see here how it is generated, in fact, the game key and the secret key. And it's a very good idea to go ahead and save those because you may need them later. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add GA to the first scene of the project. And to do that, if there's not a project already existent, then we, of course, need to make one. We also need to make a game object of some kind. So let's go ahead and make a game object now, make a 3D object, let's say a cube. So there we have our cube. Now the first thing we want to do is to add a system tracker, and this allows the designer to track many predefined events like error messages and level transitions without added coding, which is a bonus. And to do this, to add the GA system tracker object, we locate the top menu and navigate to Window, Game Analytics, and then add GA system tracker. Now there are several options associated with the system tracker. The first one here you'll see is used for subsequent levels. If enabled, the GA system tracker will not be destroyed on the next level that makes it persistent. So this allows the designer to place a single tracker in the first level of the game and to use the same tracker throughout the game. Uh, as an important note, do not use more than one system tracker per level. Our second here is the submit level transitions. If enabled, Game Analytics will automatically submit an event whenever a new scene is loaded. 
The duration of the previous scene is stored in the event value, also valuable information. Next we have Submit System Info. If enabled, Game Analytics will submit detailed system information at the beginning of each play session, followed by Submit Average FPS, which stands for frames per second. If enabled, Game Analytics will submit average frames per second, followed by Submit Critical FPS. If enabled, Game Analytics will automatically submit an event to the servers whenever FPS fails, or rather falls, below a certain threshold during a short interval. The location of the track target will be used for critical FPS events. Next, we have the critical FPS interval, shown here. That interval is in seconds for which to track critical FPS. If the FPS in this interval is below the threshold defined above, an event is submitted. Following that, we have error handling and submit errors. If enabled, Game Analytics submits log information for errors and exceptions that occur during a play session. Following that, we have error handling and submit stack trace, which if enabled, Game Analytics or GA will submit the stack trace for any exceptions that occur during a play session. Next in line, we have error handling. Error handling uh, for submit system info. If enabled, uh, Game Analytics will submit system information for errors and exceptions that occur during a play test or rather play session. Um, we have a max error count down here towards the bottom. And a uh, max error count uh, is a maximum number of errors and exceptions tracked per session. It's a good idea to keep this number relatively low so as not to submit a huge number of repeating exceptions. And the last is we have a checkbox for uh, GUI enabled. If enabled, Game Analytics GUI interface will show up when the game is played. This way players can use this graphic user interface to submit feedback and bug reports to the game analytics server, which as you can imagine, can be pretty powerful when you get into your playtesting phase. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach a GA tracker to object. As you see, I've already created an object, the cube, and we're going to treat it as if it's the player for the sake of this. So I'm going to go and go and select the cube here. Then I'm going to go into to window, game analytics. And I'm going to add GA tracker to object. So now that I have that added, it has the following options itself. So you can see in this area of the screen that we have those options for uh, the GA tracker to object, which in this case we're going to use as a player. And using the player as a GA tracked object is not the worst idea in the world. First is breadcrumb. And the breadcrumb shows where the player has been, which can be important and operates uh, in some ways like a heat map and is involved in heat map. Next is start, which sends an event to the start. It sends an event when the start method is run. That's used to track object spawn. Next we have on destroy, which sends an event when the on destroy method is run. It's used to track object death, quote unquote. Next, we have on level was loaded, which sends an event when the on level was loaded method is run, and that's used basically for tracking when a new level is loaded. Following that, we have on trigger enter, and that sends an event when the on trigger enter method is run, and it's used to track when an object enters a trigger area. Following that, we have on collision enter, which of course sends an event when that method is run, that's used for tracking collision, and then we have on controller collider hit is different and what that does is it's used to track when a controller hits a collider while performing a move. Now we also have the ability to create custom events. Creating customized events helps track events specific to a particular project. It could be related to a unique game mechanic, error tracking on a specific problem area, or to track how often an item or move is used in order to say balance the game. To do so, a line of code must be added to the script where the event occurs. Now there are cer there's a certain convention to how that line of script needs to go, and I'll show you a good example. Here's an example of a new event with a pretty simple, standard, straightforward syntax to it. It generally goes like this. You have capital GA dot new event. And then inside you have a category, and beyond that the parameters. So the category 
to the string is all events sent to the game analytics servers. And it must have a category type. And that category can either be user, design, business, or error. Now I'd say that they're pretty self-explanatory, but I'll go ahead and go through is one is user-centered, one is design-centered, one is about your revenue, and the other is about errors in your code. Now parameters can be any number of things. It's a generic object in which you define the parameters you wish to send to the game analytics server. It's truly up to you. Now, some event categories require specific parameters. But that list is very long. It can take a very long time to get in this tutorial. So what I will do is I'll put down here in the bottom a link to um, GA's own website with their list of those parameters. So that should help you with coding. It's pretty comprehensive. It's pretty easy to see. So if you click on the link that should be popping up at the bottom of the screen now, you have to go there yourself. So now that you have a basic idea how to set up um, game analytics on uh, your game, on you should want to see your data. So if we want to retrieve the analytic data, what we need to do is we need to start by going to www.gameanalytics.com, which you'll remember is where you downloaded this stuff to begin with. So, first thing we do is we'll go ahead and log in or sign up. Now, I've gone ahead and done this on another window because I don't want to give you my password. And we'll pick a game. In this case, we'll pick the demo game. Okay, now from here up top, you'll see we have different categories here where we can pull analytics from. We have real time data which for the purposes of this course isn't quite so important for us. Acquisition, which is again about sources and campaigns, and again, not something that we're doing in the design phase. Monetization also, not something that we're really concerning ourselves with too much. Generally, we are concerned mostly with engagement and quality. In terms of engagement, we have retention rates, the number of sessions per user, average session length per user. I mean, there is literally nearly limitless data that we can pull from this to help us figure out what our users like and what they don't. And we also have a quality tab here, which is sadly big, big numbers of error events. Uh, and this also helps you help you track how buggy your software is or particularly where the bugs are. It's a powerful tool in debugging your game. I suggest you use it. Now, something else of particular interest to people using analytics in their game design process is uh, the heat map. And uh, GA does not currently support a full one click heat map request that generates graphic designer centered data via the website. However, it does capture the locations of game events. And the data can be accessed from GA servers. Now, a function to request game information from GA servers must include the game key. Do you remember the game key from when you first signed in? It must include the game key as a unique ID um, for it to pull your data for you. And I've gone ahead and given you an example function that retrieves information about areas, event IDs, and builds from the game. It has an example game key integrated and highlighted in bold text. Now this may be Greek to some of you, uh, some of which Greek to me, to be honest. But uh, I've included uh, at the bottom of the comments section uh, some links for you, including a complete example in C Sharp of the GA request class from Game Analytics SDK for Unity. I've got a link for that. Now it should also be noted that uh, <clears throat> Game Analytics also has a YouTube channel, which I just pulled up for you here, which is really fantastic in terms of telling you what Game Analytics is really about, um, the play, you know, what you should use it for, um, and then you know some uh, more technical stuff for whoever you have coding your game to uh, help you learn all you need to learn. So uh, that's it for now. I'll make sure I get those links there in uh, the bottom box for you to be able to grab some of this stuff yourself. And uh, good luck.